so I will uh, tell you how to make this. This is ideal if you want a rig that does not use any physics, any uh, modifiers or anything, just bones and constraints if you're doing, say, a looping animation for a game or if you want maximum control over your uh, posing. So for instance, um, there is there are bones in this that will control the uh, animation, so like these ones, but these ones are like the control bones and these ones are the ones that will not get keyed, but you can control how the cape acts and pose it dynamically. I think it helps for more control over whatever you want to animate. and. This can be scaled up to multiple strands or as detailed as you want. And uh, I will explain how it is created now. And uh, I'll go into some other reject ideas that I had later. So in terms of creating the rig, uh, you want to get a bone. I'll make... Um, you want to first of all turn on... Uh, axes, just so you know that what you're doing, and I'm going to make it uh, three, I think, just to um, speed up creating this so it's easier for you to see, but you could do this with any number of uh, bones. So first thing you're going to do is going to name it, so def cape zero, and then we're going to Subdivide it. I'm going to subdivide it twice. And then rename this to 2 and this to 1. So it's easy to see the name and the find which bone you're working on because it's going really gonna to duplicate this a lot. So now that we have the uh, deformation bones. So the, what, what these are is these are going to be the bones that you're going to actually have weight groups on, so you want deform turned on. So now we're going to duplicate these. Move to the left by one, and uh, you can see my um, screencast keys if you want. Uh, just in case you don't know what the commands are, but I won't be explaining them just to get you this quicker. So this we're going to make it uh, TGT Just copy that. And then we're going to duplicate this again. I'm going to make this one called the control. This will uh, make it so that you could have. It, it will make the rig as easy to understand as possible. And then, uh, when you actually like see this in action, you know, move this X again, and then this one's going to be the uh, anim. Oops. I want that to be zero. I will explain what all of these layers will do. So that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. So now, now that we have those done, you want to select all of these. You can just use box select. And you want to Alt and click Deform, and that will uh, remove def de uh, the deform yeah, the deform attribute on all of these, so that you can only have these bones be the ones that appear when you do a weight or when rigging. So now we want to on the uh, deformation bones. We're going to add a constraint, so go into pose mode, 
these these will all get overlapped on top of each other. I'm just separating them out to make it clear. So on the uh, deformed bones, we don't actually want them parented. So Alt P, clear parent, and now they're just individual. So you can now click on this, and we're going to use the target. So we want to click target, shift click this, control shift C, add a copy transforms. And then all of those settings are fine. So then this, this, copy transforms, this, this, copy transforms, it adds this uh, constraint. Cool, so now uh, these bones are rigged. We'll move those to layer one, so I'll select everything, move those to layer two, and uh, this is now fine, we're done with that one. So let's keep going. We go to, let's go to the target bones, and now this is where it's going to get a bit abstract. Actually, no, let's, um, let's do the anim first. So in, in, you, can, you can animate this a number of ways. I've got an example later in the reject, which is uh, just doing sine waves. But I'll go to animation for now. And uh, I'll select these, hide everything just so we can animate this. So I'll make a really quick animation. But basically, you want to pose it like it's doing the wave. So we've got a keyframe rotation. Roll that down. Roll that there, there. Rotation, next frame. So the, the diagram is, you have, so imagine if you have, say, a cylinder. And if you can picture it going this way, so for instance here, the cylinder would be somewhere like here, and the bones would be wrapping around it. And then later, this goes up like this, this moves along. So if you can imagine the cylinder as sort of wind passing through this cape, this is how the cloth would react in this situation. So this being back here, going across for this bit, and then this bit, it passes back over the cape. And then you can copy the first frame, put it back here, Then go on to another frame of relaxness. Yeah, so keep keep an eye on this first one because it's gonna want to go down, catch its breath, then go back up. So here it needs to be up a bit higher. And I think that'll be right. Yeah, so now now we have what is going to be more or less a sine wave for the first one. So it's going to go down and up fairly consistently. And then the second one, it's going to be sort of shifted slightly. The rotation sort of changes depending on the segment you're on. And this is why the sine wave didn't work out so well. But for the animation like this, we're going to shift select all of these. I'm going to just put on, I'm going to go to, go to the uh, graph editor, control shift M, cycles. And what this will do is this will repeat the animation. So now I can just, oop, doesn't look right. Now this one didn't get the cycles. Uh, I'm going to select all of this, select everything here, then control shift M, cycles. And then that will repeat the animation. So yeah, it's pretty quick. So I'm gonna scale that out a bit by like two. Yep, that works. And now, once you've animated your anim bones, so these are all of the anim cape bits, you can see that what we want is we want the control bones 
to be somewhat the midway between these animation bones. Oh no, you want the target cape to be somewhat in between the animation bones and this control cape. So what it was, what now yeah, what that requires is it requires a copy transforms from the control. So I'm going to click, shift click on that and then shift click on this. Control shift C, copy transforms. And then go back to the yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's protected. Oh no, it's because it's uh, overlapped. Yeah. So yeah, the bone needs to. It's copy transforms, and it needs to be on a local space. So you can see it there. And then you want it to have a copy rotation afterwards to this. So you want to sh cl click that, shift click this, control C, control shift C, copy rotation. Set it to add local space, local space. And then change it to just the X, because that's all we really want. So now, this is copying the rotation. So, so in in this stack, it says copy transforms, copy transforms to this cape. So it copies them all exactly. But then afterwards, it adds the rotation of this. So now we can see that when we change that, it will copy all of the rotation from this. So now we want to do that to the rest of them. So click that. Shift click this. Copy transforms. Copy transforms. So now we want it to replace. Uh, press S on here to change it to local space real quickly. And then now that's all set up. So now I want to click on that. Shift click this. Control Shift C. Copy rotation. Save all that. Local space. Local space. Add. So now on here, uh, last one. Local space, local space, add. Get rid of that. And then that is all identical. So now it works perfectly. This now controls all of them. And we can overlap them now. So stop playing. Go back to. So maybe, maybe you want to uh, move these to different layers. So for, so for instance, the anim bones can move to a different layer. Uh, target I'm going to leave on this layer. I'm going to move. Uh, this to this layer and then this to this layer and now we have all of our different bones on different layers so highlight them all and then we want to move this snapping uh, I'm pressing control to snap it and now everything is overlapped and then we could just only show our uh, anim, not anim bones, we want to show our control bones. So once that's there, we now have the ability to duplicate them. So we can duplicate this entire thing and it keeps everything intact. So grab on the X, Shift D, Shift D. And now the only thing different is that the animation bones are animated on this one, but not on the rest of them. So if we go to animation, click on this, uh, select all of these, sorry, I, uh, rotation, we just want one keyframe, uh, put it up first to make it more obvious. We just want one keyframe so we can copy curves. So clicking on this, select everything, control C, control V, control V, click on this, Select everything, control C, control V, control V, control A, control C, control V, control V. And that is done. So now it's all in sync, but we don't have the modifiers, so select all of those, select everything, control shift M, cycles. So now everything's on sync. So now we want to make it off sync slightly. So you can indeed go into as much animation as you want for this. 
you can uh, say add uh, different offsets, different waves for different strands. I find it works best if you just um, hand animate this, like with the uh, barrel going under it. I will show you the more examples of why I don't think so, like sine wave animating is perfect, because you can see that there's a lot of discrepancies here, and you could just iron those out. And there's a like a diagram for animation. Look up like wave principle, and it will show you how to look at these four different keyframes and see that here it's going like a line like this. Uh, I might even just get a um, grease pencil object and draw it. So we want one like this, and then one like this. So that, then that, then uh, that, that. Uh, Yeah, it's not very good drawing, but I hope you get the idea. You, I will show in depth on the um, original animation on the five strands just to make it a bit more clear with the barrel analogy, and then try and illustrate that. But yeah, now this is done, we can go back to layout. On here we have the... Uh, that's the deformation bones, that's the target bones. That's the control bones. So, now that we have this done, we can add a piece of cloth. So add your plane. Add some cuts. And then we want to click on that, shift click this. This is one situation where I think it's pretty acceptable to uh, uh, select your mesh and then shift click that, control P. Automatic weights, I think, is acceptable for this. If you have a more detailed cape, then please don't do automatic weights. It ruins everything. But now that's on there, we can add a uh, subdivision. Put that above it. Uh, set it to smooth shaded. Viewport. Uh, twice, yeah. And then that should uh, be rippling quite nicely. So now, now what we can do is you can pose the control bones in whichever way you want. And that is the cape rig done. And you can then go back and see that only these deformation bones affect what's happening on the mesh. And you can combine this with, say, NLA strips to get it working. Might do an NLA uh, like editor video on itself because that's just so many cool things you can do with that. But these are the only bones that will be affected. And then the target bones are the bones that take all the animation and the control bones are what you would do to change the rough offset of the cape and if you uh, wanted to have this cape start and stop what I would do is go into the target bones you can then so if you want to just have this constantly playing then you can either animate those to stop or you can go into here have the constraints menu, make a driver for this, and then set the influence all to zero. So if I select all of these, uh, this might work. No, it didn't. So uh, yeah, have a play with it. But that's the rig done. Uh, go to the control bones again. Yeah, that's, the, um, that's how you do the rig. And feel free to use it in whatever. So now I'm going to talk about the um, demo again. Uh, the animation I made for this was a lot more... Hide that. 
So the the animation was on here. Yeah. So if if you look at say this bone, I can see that this curve. This is just the X rotation. It's just using quartan. It's not using quaternions. It's just using X Y Z. It's more or less a sine wave, and that's that's what I thought this was going to be when going into this. That this is just how I sort of was researching this. I thought, oh, this will just be a sine wave, and it's going to be an offset sine wave. But no, there's as more as as I tried to animate this by hand, I found that all of these curves were further and further from a sine wave in shape. So this one as well is sort of I mean, you could probably roughly approximate it to a sine wave, but it doesn't seem to fit that profile. And that's what I found, because when I did actually try and do a sine wave, it didn't follow this animation that I wanted. So if I select all of these, hide them, I will try and illustrate how to uh, animate this. So if I go back to, if I add the old uh, cylinder, you can sort of see that it sort of starts out small with influence here, as a as sort of like if you imagine the wind come a lot coming along, it comes in here and it's quite small, it's quite slow, so I'm gonna I'll keyframe the location here. And then as it moves along, it sort of has more influence on the cape so it gets bigger. And you can see that this curvature around here sort of tries to follow it. And then gets bigger. Yeah, keyframe scale this time. So it gets bigger, and then as it gets like here, it starts getting really big, and it goes faster. Uh, yeah, so it keeps going until it gets to like the apex, which is at the tip of the cape, because there's so little cloth at this point that it has to uh, flick quite violently to get all of this energy out. And then as it passes through the back of the cape, the tip slowly falls down. And you can imagine, say, another ball appearing here. So if you're going to try and animate this with this idea in mind, I would have two um, cylinders going at the same time. So if I duplicate this, and then offsets its animation. It's about here. Oh no, I'm about here, sorry. So yeah, if it helps making a uh, cylinder first, then I highly advise you have a go at it. Because this is sort of how I tried to think of it. There's not really any tricks I found to making an exactly nice cape animation that wasn't just look really artificial. And I will demonstrate that now. So in my uh, rejects pile, I made this one, which was a complete static sine wave and even if you uh, look at the animation uh, yeah I, ju I didn't even keyframe this I just made the uh, I did a sine wave modifier so if I go to the modifier here you can see I just made a sine wave and on this one it's bigger Actually, if I select all of them, you can see that it's just a progressively increasing and offset sequence of sine waves. And I found that this, this just looked too... Like, even if you speed this up, it just doesn't look nice. It just looks like a flapping wave. It looks more like a tail. Feel free to use this for a tail if you want to use this sort of thing. But I also I tried to like measure offsets and change speeds, and then I tried to like make this rig which is, uh, if I go to uh, custom properties, 
It doesn't have any. But yeah, in, in this one it was all like uh, drivers. Uh, yeah, so on, on uh, this it was just uh, trying to make a... Um, do I have the driver editor? Oh no, it's an object properties. Is it? Yes, it is. So on here I made it so that I had I could change the amplitude of the wave with this attribute here using drivers and I could change the offset of like how quickly it w went and I just didn't think this worked. I could change the phase speed speed is sort of a weird property but yeah if I go to the drivers editor you can see that I tried to make a really absurd uh, function, which is like of sign, and using all of these different variables, but it didn't work out. I found it's just best to hand animate it if you want to try that, but I mean, if you want a tutorial on how to set all this stuff up and explain it, then feel free to ask, but this is the simplest medium I had to try and make it like usable and expandable and also customizable all at the same time so you didn't have to just know to do all of this crazy maths you could just sort of play around with it and have fun and it also helps that it's not so rigid in the like way it's programmed or mathematically made so that you can change the animations if you want it's just a bit of a hard sort of thing to visualize as the uh, when animating the wave but yeah, feel free to play around with it. But yeah, that's the that's the rig done.